drive feels longer every time I do it. Crossing that road is always a little bit nerve wracking. <laughs> okay, we are back in New Hampshire's White Mountains today to get some vertical elevation gain. Uh, the weather was looking a little questionable. So this loop is tough because a large portion of it is runnable, but then it gets really steep right near the peak of the mountain. In total, I'll be running nine miles with uh, 2,600 feet of elevation gain today. That's the plan at least. We'll see how it goes. So the trails up here in New Hampshire, even though we don't have really tall mountains like out west, you know, Colorado, Utah, oh, this is pretty. Got a little babbling brook down here. We do have really, 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 really rugged trails with lots of rock hopping and boulders and just gnarly stuff. But we also aren't above 10,000 feet, so there's plenty of oxygen here and all of those other challenges aren't present, so it's kind of a wash probably. That said, I have not done a lot of uh, trail running or hiking out west. I've done some in Palm Springs, California, and uh, in Arizona, but nothing like really high above that 10,000 foot mark. Okay, a little history lesson about the White Mountains of New Hampshire. There are 48 peaks that are above 4,000 feet in elevation. If you can hike them all, you can get a little patch from the Appalachian Mountain Club if you apply. And that patch represents, you know, an accomplishment of climbing all the high peaks in New Hampshire. And I like to come here to kind of test my fitness a little bit kind of a benchmark and the real difference between doing something like this out in the backcountry or doing something like an ultra marathon with manned aid stations and help is that you got to bring a lot of extra stuff so in my pack today I've got things like a water filter I've got a first aid kit I've got an emergency whistle an emergency blanket even though it's pretty warm out today you never know and of course I leave the car with a little bit of extra water today I've got two flasks up front. I've got a spare in my backpack. And again, I do have a water filter back there too. I'm already getting my butt kicked a little bit just on this easy trail leading up to the steep trail. I just love this area on this trail. It's very uh, loose forest. You know, the areas where you feel like you could see some wildlife, some moose or bears or something. That's what it feels like in here. Although I am yet to see anything. Let's talk about defeating the dad bod. Maybe I'll even title this video that. But I don't want to say dad bod because that's not inclusive. So let's call it the parent bod. How about that? If you've got kids and you're a somewhat active person, you know what I'm talking about. The struggle is real and uh, not everyone appreciates that. So how do I manage it? How do I still get out here while having three kids, full-time job, all the things that I'm sure a lot of you have? Well, there's a few ways I try to manage it. First of all, it's planning. It's all planning, really. My wife and I share a Google Calendar, and as much as I hate it, because I'm kind of spontaneous at the core, I plan ahead. I put my PTO days on the calendar at work for random days off throughout the week, and I'll come out here because, you know, ultimately this is, this is the stuff that makes me happy, so it's worth using that time to do this stuff. The second thing that helps me manage all of this is being adaptive adapt and evolve to the situation. So if I've got something epic on the calendar, 
it's gonna take me 12, 13 hours with driving back and forth. And then maybe one of my kids gets sick, something comes up, I can't get mad about it. I just have to pivot and do something else, maybe closer to home, maybe a little bit shorter, just adapting to whatever situation you're given. The next key ingredient to defeating the dad bod is to not get frustrated and be understanding. So for instance, this weekend, I was supposed to be camping in Vermont, running the Vermont 100, it's supposed to be a glorious weekend. That all got canceled. But if you still find a way to lace up your shoes like I am today and do something else, that may be not as epic, but still beneficial to you, it's worth it. It's always worth it. I promise it's never not worth it. And I'm sure my wife is watching this and being like, he still gets really mad when he can't do his thing. It's true, but I'm a work in progress. I'm just sharing what, uh, what I'm trying to do here. And the final tip I'll share about defeating that dad bod, or parent bod rather, is gonna be to support the people in your life that have goals and they'll support you back. A great example of this in my personal life is my wife. She's got her personal goals, I've got my goals, and we both get after them together. And without her, I wouldn't be able to do this. And without me, she wouldn't be able to do her thing. And it's a mutual respect, it's a give and take. And again, Jen, I am so thankful that you're watching the kids today and getting haircuts and letting me do this. <laughs> Thank you very much. And like I said, I'm certainly not perfect. I'm still a work in progress. I still get angry. I still wanna give up all the time but something compels me to uh, keep lacing up the shoes. And I feel like by sharing this stuff on YouTube and telling you guys about it, it holds me accountable. So that's kind of the goal here. Anyways, I hope that can help some of you out there that might be struggling with the balance. And if you've got some tips that I don't know that might be beneficial to me or others, share them in the comments down below. Let us know how you get by the parent bod life, stay in shape while having a family. Okay, we are officially on the steep terrain on North Hancock and it started raining. So all this steep stuff is very wet and muddy and gross, slippery, but we're still moving. <laughs> Okay, we just tagged the first Hancock Peak and now we're on to the second. This stretch of the trail is pretty awesome. We're kind of on a ridge between the two peaks. Not a whole bunch of elevation gain or loss, just really nice trails. Unfortunately, no views today. Uh, we're basically inside of a cloud. I like to refer to this as being inside the ping pong ball. <laughs> Oh man, it is so wet up here. It's raining, it's humid, I'm sweaty. I don't know if you guys can even see me right now because my GoPro is soaked. It's a very wet day. I, every bit of me is soaked through. Shoes, shirt, shorts, yeah. <laughs> okay, we just tagged the second peak for the day. That just about wraps it up in terms of elevation gain. And uh, now it's all downhill from here. So I'm gonna start motoring, because I'd like to get back to my car and out of this rain. got back to the car uh, that took me three hours and 16 minutes which is a lot slower than I anticipated but it's really wet out there pretty slippery so that definitely slowed me down all in all though pretty fun day out here on Mount Hancock north and south uh, got nine miles and 2700 feet of elevation gains I hope you enjoyed this jog in the woods with me today I hope you got something out of it and if you did please make sure to hit the thumbs up subscribe down below do all the things down there it really helps me out and maybe consider checking out my patreon page where you can see more behind the scenes content like this 
costs a couple of bucks a month, but it does help out the channel quite a bit. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye.